Hey, what's up? I am Michelle B and in this video, I want to talk about how to stick to schedules, how to follow through on the things that you set yourself to do, how to actually listen to past you who told you that you were going to work on that project, read a bit of that book, do that thing. Because at the end of the day, a lot of your outcomes are actually going to come from sticking to schedules. So let's dive into it. Let's talk about how you can actually create a good schedule, a schedule that helps you to reach your goals rather than hinders you. And then let's talk about how you can follow through on that schedule. Stop Starting with figuring out your personality type, which may seem far removed from sticking to schedules, but stick with me. So here are a few things that I know about myself that you might be able to relate to. When it comes to exercising, I thrive on accountability. Relying on myself to go on a run at 5.30am in the morning, look, it might happen, 50-50. Scheduling in with a friend to go on a run at 5.30am in the morning when they are relying on me to show up, it's a guaranteed I'm gonna be there. On the other hand, there are some things in my weeks that I know I'm gonna follow through on, like planning a video. It's just gonna happen. I don't need accountability. I don't need someone sitting there in the room watching me plan a video. And knowing this stuff about myself has really helped me to plan my schedule. So Gretchen Rubin has the four tendencies quiz, which I think will be really helpful to you if you're trying to figure out what your personality type is and how you work when it comes to tasks and schedules. It'll tell you if you're an obliger who thrives on accountability, if you are a rebel who literally hates being told what to do and does the opposite of expectations. And there are a few other personality types in there too. So when I have done this quiz, I've come out as a rebel, which may seem strange, and I've also come out as a questioner. I think for me, it truly depends on the task and the setting, but having that sort of framework in mind has helped me to think of different tasks in my life and different environments and which personality type I tend to lean towards in those situations. So knowing what personality type you are in different situations can really help you to plan out your schedule because if you're a person that thrives on accountability, you can find an accountability partner and that's gonna help you a whole lot. If you are a rebel, you know that you're gonna need a strong why behind having a schedule because there's not a chance that you're gonna follow a schedule if there's no genuine reason behind it. And also you're probably gonna schedule a little differently because you're an alternative human being and you don't wanna follow the crowd. So I'm gonna link the four tendencies quiz down below for you to do after you finish this video. The second thing I wanna talk about is not scheduling in the details. And this has been something that's really important to me as someone who has scored rebel and questioner on the four tendencies quiz. Everyone works differently, but if you're watching this video, I'm gonna say that you have gone through a phase where you've tried to schedule in like every 30 minutes of your day. So like take form to bank, 8.30 a.m., have a snack at 9 a.m., film Facebook video from 10 a.m. to 10.15 a.m., upload Facebook video from 10.15 to 10.30 a.m. You get what I mean, let's not continue. So I tend to rebel against things that past me told present me to do. Unless there's a really strong why behind why I should be doing that particular thing at that specific time, it's probably not going to happen. So what I'm going to recommend that you do is that you actually sit back and you go into strategic life planning mode by first asking yourself, what your most valuable activities are, really getting to the root of why those activities are important, figuring out whether there is a specific quantity of those tasks that needs to be done in a week so that you can measure your success with doing them and then schedule them in broadly in your calendar. I'm gonna flesh this out. I know that sounded vague. It's the most vague thing I've ever said in a video. <laughs> so for example, one of my highest value activities is filming sitting in front of a camera, talking some words. So I know that filming is a really high value activity for me. If I don't film, I am stressed. Having film videos is the one thing that like keeps me ahead of the game. It's the way that I literally build my audience, connect with my community and keep myself alive. Since I am batching and scheduling for the future, I know that right now, every week, I need to film four videos and then I'll be content. So I've identified the high value activity, filming. I've identified a quantity of that that I need to do four videos. And then I have put a big block in my calendar on a Friday morning where I film. Notice that I don't have put on makeup 8 to 8.30 a.m., set up camera from 8.30 a.m. to 8.45 a.m., film video one, film video two. It's literally just a batch amount of time for filming, any filming related tasks I do within this time period. I organize my filming notes so I know what I need to film within this time period, but you could also have a little to-do list that is specifically related to filming or 
reading or whatever it is that you're working on. That way, when it comes to that filming time block, you have a list, you can go through that list and you are good to go. I know that scheduling the detail works for a lot of people, so I'm not gonna push that aside and say that it doesn't work, but I am going to say that depending on your personality type, it may not be the right way to go because you might just rebel. Unless I have like a crazy hectic day where I have like an event to go do at night, I'm hanging out with a friend at 12 and then I also have to film and write and do all the things. In that instance, I might plan in the detail, but in that instance, there's also a really strong why behind why I'm planning that detail. And I know that if I don't get all those things done at those specific times, then I won't be able to make everything happen in the day. So sit back and ask yourself, what are the 20% of activities that I do that produce the most significant results? And how can you schedule in time to batch do those things if possible. Batching is something that I could probably make a whole video about. It's something I am diving deep into lately, but it's just a way to put in less effort and get more done in your time, which is another way to effectively schedule your weeks. So after you've identified those high value activities and you have slotted times in your calendar when you're going to do them that aren't heavy in the detail, you might want to look at the other stuff that is still very useful to you, but isn't necessarily within that 20%. So for example, something that I schedule in is my weekly reset and I schedule in my cleaning. You could schedule in some time specifically for doing life admin tasks. You could schedule in some time just for answering emails. Ideally not before 12 because that's your high energy time. Always schedule the most important things first and then lead to those other things that if they didn't get done, yes, it would suck, but you would be okay. Like you'd still be able to keep up in life. Because at the end of the day, if I don't answer all of my emails, those people are gonna survive. But if I don't film a video, I'm gonna be far more heavily affected. And you guys are too. And that's just self-sabotage. The next thing I wanna talk about is setting yourself up ahead of time. So when I sit down to write video plans, my little video outlines are already sitting there in my little writing app. The titles are all there. I know what I'm writing about and I'm set up to go. There's little to no free friction between me sitting down and starting to write because there's nothing I really have to do. It's all set up for me. So think about the things that you want to get done in a week and how you can make those things easier for, for yourself by setting things up ahead of time. So if you're writing a blog post the day before, you could write a very quick dot by dot outline. You could create templates so that whenever you go to start the thing, you have a template to get you going. If you're cleaning tomorrow, you could get out your cleaning checklist and make sure that it's like easily accessible and there's little to no friction between you doing that thing. So when it comes to friction, to identify the friction between you and the thing that you want to do, all you need to do is think about that thing that you want to do and then really get some awareness of how fuzzy your brain feels when you think about that thing. Like that's the only way that I can explain it. And if you can see the fuzziness and you're like, yeah, there's a lot of fuzz, that means that you need to clarify and that you need to make things easier for yourself and set things up ahead of time. So for instance, recently I wanted to plan out six months worth of content and then I was like, Ha! Ah, I don't know where to start. And by that, I just mean schedule it into my calendar, but I was really struggling. Like there was so much fuzziness around that particular to-do. I was like, where do I even start? I want this to be strategic planning, not just me being like, yeah, that there, that there, that there. So I was like, okay, this feels really fuzzy to me. I know that there is actually a course on Skillshare that I can use to help me do this. I think it's called creating a purposeful editorial calendar. So that class that I did on content planning and planning out your editorial calendar, calendar was a really good sort of first step to reduce the fuzziness of that to do. I feel like I went on a mini tangent there, but just to rehash, to set yourself up ahead of time for success, you can set up your workstation, set up the things that you need to do the thing ahead of time. So open your writing program, get out the cleaning things that you need to use, whatever it may be. You can use things like templates, like checklists, and you can have a look at your to-dos, identify whether they're fuzzy, and then reduce the fuzzy by taking a step back and identifying the very next action that you can do for that thing that doesn't feel fuzzy and feel super actionable and achievable. So the next thing that you absolutely need to be doing if you are trying to stick to a schedule and be a productive human being, a productive member of society, is to remove distractions. So something that I have realized recently is that my trigger to pick up my phone, it's not a notification. The trigger is seeing my phone. If I see my phone out of the corner of my eye, I will reach for it, I will grab it, and I will have a look, even though there's no notifications on it, I've turned all notifications off, and I might 
flick into Instagram, open my Gmail, whatever pleases my lizard brain at that point in time. And then you end up losing track, wasting time, not sticking to your schedule, feeling bad about not sticking to your schedule, feeling bad because you've just scrolled through social media and looked at people that made you feel bad. So as a general rule, when I am working intensely, especially when I am writing, I have my phone out of the room. I won't hop on it, but don't have your phone within reaching distance. Don't have your phone within eyesight. I like to put my phone in a drawer outside of my room. I also like to turn it off. And when I do that, I might not touch my phone for the entire day and I'll remember it in the afternoon, check my messages and I'm good to go. You know what your other distractions are aside from your phone. So maybe you are a person that cannot stop watching YouTube videos. So block YouTube on your computer. If you can't resist the fantasy book that you're currently in the middle of, make sure that that's not within eyesight either. The next thing that I wanna talk about is one that's only really come to me recently. It's something that will not only help you to stick to your schedule, but it'll also help you to stop wasting time and to get better work done. And that is not taking immersive breaks. I talked a little bit about this in my video on how to rest productively, but it's something that I've dived deep into lately since reading Deep Work by Cal Newport. He talks a lot about how whenever you take a break and you do something like go on Facebook or watch a little bit of that Netflix show, you are completely switching tasks in your mind. Your mind is taken entirely off the task at hand. That means your brain isn't programmed to be like churning out good ideas for the thing that you're working on in the background as it's programmed to do. It's not thinking about the problem that you're trying to solve at hand subconsciously anymore. It's totally engaged in Facebook. Then when you try to actually get back to the activity that you're trying to get done, it's gonna take sweet time for your brain to switch back to that task and to fully focus and engage. So switch out the things that you do in your breaks that are immersive to more mindless activities. These activities can still be really helpful activities. So it might be putting all of your clothes in the washing machine and pressing start, or it might be hanging your clothes up on the clothes line. Don't know why we're going to clothes related activities. Could also be packing the dishwasher. There's a lot of cleaning activities that you can do that are kind of mindless, that still keep your brain engaged in the problem at hand so that your subconscious is churning out those good ideas for you. You could also go for a walk. There's a non-cleaning related activity. <laughs> the reason why this is helpful to help you stick to schedules is because firstly, you're not gonna get distracted in that break. So you're not gonna start flicking through Facebook, look up and realize that an hour later that you've wasted all this time and you haven't been able to stick to the things that you wanted to do. And secondly, you're just gonna get better work done and more work done because your focus is going to be so much better when you're doing the task. If you liked this video, you might like my video that I made on how to plan a productive day. I'll link it in the description below if you're interested in that. I appreciate you guys so much. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you soon.